Hi everyone, welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilopathology.com. In continuation with the series on microscopic description of practical slides, common practical slides which you encounter, this is the third part of that series where we'll be discussing few slides in the next 10 to 15 minutes. And the first slide for today is pleomorphic adenoma. This is the most common benign salivary gland tumor. I will show you the gross picture of this tumor. So this is a gray white glistening tumor and that is the salivary glandular tissue. It's a benign well circumscribed tumor of the salivary gland and the most common salivary gland affected is the major salivary gland or the parotid salivary gland. Microscopically you can make out that the capsule is poorly formed. It does not have a very well defined capsule. It's a circumscribed tumor. Okay, That means it, it will not have a well defined capsule. So it is poorly formed capsule and the characteristic microscopic feature of pleomorphic adenoma is the presence of chondromyxoid stroma as well as the epithelial cells. Two components, the chondromyxoid stroma and the epithelial cells. Now what is the what are these epithelial cells these are basically either the ductal epithelial cells and the surrounding myoepithelial cells okay and in between these is what you find is a stroma which is chondromyxoid stroma illustration of pleomorphic adenoma looks complicated but i'll try to explain what you have to demonstrate is presence of either chondroid or the myxoid stroma see it looks it should look like a cartilage it is not a true cartilage, cartilage, hence it is referred to as a pseudo cartilage. Okay, and the epithelial component is composed of tubules and cords of the cells which are lined by inner epithelial cells and surrounding these epithelial cells are the myoepithelial cells. Okay, and these flattened ones are the myoepithelial cells. Okay, so the tubules and cards with inner epithelial cells and the outer myoepithelial cells. And remember, myoepithelial cells need not be all, always around the tubules, it can also be seen scattered in the stroma, in the scattered in the mixoid stroma as spindle or stellate shaped cells. So, the myoepithelial cells can also be seen scattered in the mixoid stroma as spindle shaped cells or stellate shaped cells. Very rarely you can find evidence of osseous metaplasia. Okay, What do you mean by osseous metaplasia? The stroma tissue gets converted to bone that is osseous metaplasia and you can also see some of the epithelial cells as converted into a squamous epithelium and that is called as squamous metaplasia. All these features are found in pleomorphic adenoma. Remember pleomorphism does not equate to malignancy in this tumor. It, it basically tells you there are different kinds of architectural features in this tumor. That is why it is called pleomorphic adenoma. So, do not get confused that it is a malignant neoplasm. This is a benign salivary gland neoplasm. And the next important slide is intradermal nevus. What is an intradermal nevus? These are pigmented lesions of varying sizes, usually around 2 to 6 millimeter in diameter. It has a very symmetric architecture. They usually appear as papules or macules. First, I will show you the illustration of intradermal nevus and then we will see the actual histopathologic image of intradermal nevus. As you can see, this tumor is often circumscribed and symmetric in nature. Okay, there is orderly proliferation of the nevus cells. This is a characteristic feature. The maturation of the nevus cells in this tumor is what differentiates intradermal nevus from malignant melanoma, which I'll be discussing a bit later. Okay, so all these cells are monotonous in appearance. They look like similar. Each of these clusters look similar. Monotonous appearance with the bland cytological features. No nuclear features of malignancy you find in intradermal nevus. Okay, so this slide might look busy for you, but then I'll try to explain maturation senescence. This is what I told you, right? This is a characteristic feature of intradermal nevus. Okay, so maturation senescence means what? You have different types of melanocytes which are categorized as type A melanocytes, 
type B melanocytes and type C melanocytes. Type A melanocytes are the most superficial one. Type B melanocytes are the middle part and the type C melanocytes are the deeper part. The type C melanocytes are the most mature melanocytes. Okay. Now, what are these type A melanocytes? Type A melanocytes, as you can see, these are large cells. They are large, round to polygonal in shape. They have moderate to abundant amounts of cytoplasm with large amounts of pigment in the cytoplasm. Okay? They look like epithelial cells and that's why they are also referred to as epithelioid-like melanocytes. Okay? So type A melanocytes are large cells. They are called epithelioid-like melanocytes. Whereas type B melanocytes, as you can see, they are in the form of nests of cells. And these cells are smaller as compared to that of type A cells. They look more like a lymphocyte, right? They look more like a lymphocyte. They are small and round and that's why it is called as lymphocyte-like. Unlike type A, which is epithelioid-like, these are lymphocyte-like melanocytes. They are type B melanocytes. Now, type C melanocytes, which are found in the deeper dermis, they are spindle-shaped cells. In my earlier session, I had talked about how a spindle-shaped cell look, right? So, these are spindle-shaped cells. Remember, there are no nests. You do not find nests as you find in either type A as well as type B. They are haphazardly scattered. They are spindle-shaped cells with elongated nucleus. They look like neural cells, okay? So, unlike type A and type B, type C melanocytes are neural-like because they have a Schwannian differentiation. So now, histologically, remember three points. One, they are circumscribed lesions, they are symmetrical lesions, and then you have maturation, orderly maturation, consisting of from top to bottom, type A melanocytes, type B melanocytes, and type C melanocytes. Type A is epithelioid, type B is lymphocyte-like, and type C is neural-like. And that's about intradermal nevus illustration. Now, let me show you how exactly it looks on a histopathological slide. Can you see this? This is your surface of skin with epidermis and this part is the dermis, right? And you can make out that in the upper part of this tumor, you find cells which are larger. In this part, you find cells which are much smaller and dot-like, lymphocyte-like. I'll just take you to the higher magnification. So, this is the upper part of the tumor. These are type A melanocytes, okay, nests of cells, large polygonal cells. And that's the middle part of the tumor, which are type B melanocytes. They are much smaller, round, like a lymphocyte, lymphocyte-like. And this is the deeper part, which are spindle-shaped cells, neural-like. These are type C melanocytes. Okay, that's how intradermal nevus looks like. Okay, it's much simpler, symmetrical, circumscribed, type A, type B and type C. So, that completes intradermal nevus. And my next slide is another important, another classical slide, which is squamous cell carcinoma. Okay, we had talked about squamous papilloma in my earlier session, right? This is squamous cell carcinoma, which is a malignant epithelial tumor. How do you diagnose squamous cell carcinoma? What do you see? You should see pleomorphic squamous epithelial cells arising from the epidermis. So this is your normal epidermis. You can make out that's your normal epidermis. From the normal epidermis, there is a tumor which is arising and then going deeper into the dermis. Right? It is going deeper into the dermis in the form of sheets, extension of the epithelium itself as well as in the form of nests and clusters of cells. These are pleomorphic cells, pleomorphic squamous epithelial cells. Remember I talked about pleomorphic adenoma where there was no nuclear features of malignancy. This is actual malignancy where you find pleomorphism. Pleomorphism means marked variation in size and shape of the cell as well as the nucleus. Okay. So, these pleomorphic squamous epithelial cells are rising from the epidermis and then extending into the dermis. This is what you are seeing right now. Characteristic feature of a well-differentiated squamous cell carcinoma is to find presence of keratin pearls. Okay. What are these keratin pearls? This is central keratinization because squamous, the function of squamous epithelium is to synthesize keratin. Right? Even in tumor, it synthesizes abnormal amounts of keratin in the form of 
pearls okay they are surrounded by concentric layers of abnormal squamous cells the central keratinization surrounded by the concentric layers of abnormal pleomorphic squamous epithelial cells and this formation is called as pearl like and because the central part is keratin these are called as keratin pearls so remember you find lots and lots of keratin pearls in squamous cell carcinoma that is what slide which will be uh, shown that's an actual histopathologic image of uh, squamous cell carcinoma this will be focused in spotters as well you will be focused these very classical pearls these are squamous pearls keratin pearls central keratinization surrounded by this pleomorphic squamous epithelium that's a tumorous cells so that's about squamous cell carcinoma remember two points what is it one point the first point is pleomorphic squamous epithelial cells arising from the epidermis extending into the dermis second point presence of numerous keratin pearls that's it the next slide is basal cell carcinoma one of the most cutest slide which you can get in practical examination is basal cell carcinoma as you all know basal cell carcinomas the most common location of basal cell carcinoma is the head and neck region particularly the face usually the most common location would be the uh, you know above the line which is drawn from the angle of the mouth to the pin of the ear okay this is the angle of mouth and that's the pin of the ear so this is the location of basal cell carcinoma usually single ulcerated that's why it's called rodent ulcer it burrows into the skin that is why it is also referred to as rodent ulcer histopathologically classical feature you will be seeing this is also a malignant epithelial tumor arising from the epidermis what you saw in squamous cell carcinoma similarly this is also tumor arising from the epidermis but then this tumor is different from squamous cell carcinoma in the form of these cells are nests of basaloid cells they are basaloid cells they have bluish tinge okay with scant cytoplasm unlike in squamous cell carcinoma where you found the cytoplasm was abundant eosinophilic they are large polygonal pleomorphic cells whereas in basal cell carcinoma these are nests of basaloid cells very scant amount of cytoplasm elongated hyperchromatic nuclei hyperchromatic intensely blue stained nuclei is your cells of basal cell carcinoma okay and the characteristic feature of basal cell carcinoma again you find this peripheral palisading you can make out that the nuclei is arranged like a palisade in the peripheries so this is your peripheral palisading and then one more is the artifactual separation of the tumor nodules or the tumor cells from the surrounding stroma these are called as tumor clefts this is also a classical feature of basal cell carcinoma going on to the higher magnification you should demonstrate the presence of peripheral palisading now what is a palisading palisading means the cells are arranged nuclei are arranged parallel to one another palisade basically means a fence of wooden stakes or iron railings fixed onto the ground okay it, it basically forms an enclosure similarly even in basal cell carcinoma the peripheral cells looks like as if it is forming an enclosure for the central cells right so that is a palisade classical feature of basal cell carcinoma okay remember basal cell carcinoma is also tumor arising from the epidermis or from the follicular epithelium as well as finding is presence of nests of basaloid cells with peripheral palisading and one more important thing is that the cytoplasm is extremely scant as well as the nucleus is very hyperchromatic darkly stained that's about basal cell carcinoma let me show you a histopathological uh, image of basal cell carcinoma so that is how it looks so this is your normal epithelium okay and that's your tumor tumor arising from the epithelium you can see the tumor arising from the epithelium here in the form of nests or islands and each of these island you can make out that the periphery of the tumor island contains nuclei which are parallel to one another okay as if they are forming an enclosure of these central cells that's your peripheral palisading characteristic histological feature you find in basal cell carcinoma and the last slide for today's session is malignant melanoma we talked about intradermal nevus which is a benign lesion now this is a malignant lesion of melanocytes malignant tumor of melanocytes
what we saw in intradermal nevus is orderly maturation what we saw in nevus was circumscription symmetric in location all these are lost in malignant melanoma all you see is nests of tumor cells and these tumors are large pleomorphic the nuclei are pleomorphic variable variable size and shape of the nuclei prominent eosinophilic nuclei most characteristic feature of malignant melanoma cell is your nucleoli they are eosinophilic prominent nucleoli cytoplasm is pigmented and you find features of malignancy what are the features of malignancy you find abnormal mitosis you know it's sheet like growth there is no orderly maturation just like what you saw in intradermal nevus right very easy slide to diagnose malignant melanoma by sheer presence of pleomorphic melanocytes with prominent eosinophilic inclusion like nucleoli that's important look at this we saw the intradermal nevus slide so this is a malignant melanoma slide you can make out that's the epidermis and the whole thing is the tumor let me go to the higher magnification they are sheets of cells in between you can find this pigment and some of these cells also has pigment that's the higher magnification of the malignant melanoma each of these can you make out the pleomorphism marked variation in size and shape of the nucleus that's pleomorphism that's the feature of malignancy right and you can find pigment here and there and you can also find this nucleoli that's the nucleoli inside the nucleus you find these nucleoli very prominent nucleoli okay so that is a feature of malignant melanoma so that completes some of the important slides for your general pathology practical class revision in my next session i will be talking about slides from systemic pathology till then stay tuned take care bye bye